and welcome to The Film Room, a series where we break down footage of a game and talk about the strategy we use and work to improve our understanding and execution of strategy and mechanics in NBA 2K23. Welcome to episode one, where we ended up matching up with this team against the number one ranked player on the Xbox leaderboards, record of 286 and 88, about a 76 win percentage. This is the squad that he was using, Derek Rose, Benedict Matarin, Andre Kirilenko, Sean Kemp, and Giannis Antetokounmpo. All right, so let's start here. Adaptive coaching engine needs to go off for offense and defense. And in visual settings, we need to get team communication to on for offense and defense. This is vital for understanding when switches are happening and what coverage your teammates are gonna do. It's a, it's a really useful tool. I recommend you have this on every single game. As far as freelances go, four out one in gives me my uh, more spacing, free flowing offense when I need it. Philly elbow is meant to attack tight deny coverage. This has a lot of backdoor cuts, a lot of cutting to the basket actions, and a lot of pinch post passes from the center. The third freelance changes from time to time. I typically run the Warriors, but sometimes I'll throw a triangle in there, sometimes Spurs 2018. A couple different ones depending on what I feel the matchup is needed. And early game 2K23, I've been running, um, having 2-3 two, two, zone out there. Just in case they go into a zone, it's really easy to, to break that zone apart. Warriors freelance, I've done tutorials on the past. Gives you a lot of... Uh, a lot of screen, off ball screen action for three point shots, it's decent spacing, stuff like that. And the, the whole point of this is just to have tools versus different looks that the opponent might give me. That's important. You gotta kind of set yourself up to use the right tool in the right situation. All right, so here we are, very early possession in the game. I'm in the four outs spacing, so I'm swinging the ball over. You see Mather making a cut, and he's gonna make a V cut essentially, trying to create space. He does, so he gets that little push off on Derrick Rose there. So as he's making that um, cut back to the outside, give it to him, and then slight hesitation as defense recovers into space for a nice little mid-range jumper. So I'm definitely gonna take mid-range jumpers when the situation sees fit. All right, so here he's taking a long shot, and I'll live with the result of that. We secure the rebound, try to get it to court, but just careless with the pass leads to an easy uh, bucket for him and he's on the board. Okay, so in this next possession, again in four out, one in spacing, and we see Wilt's about to come set the screen. Now, sometimes I can wait for that, so that's essentially like a five out pick and roll, right? Uh, so we can move it over to uh, Matherin and swing, or we can hit James Worthy in the corner, kind of canceling that. So Wilt's kind of making his, his return back to the post, and in that he makes a little cut which leads to an easy basket. Okay, so here's a defense possession, and I know my settings are what they are. It's pretty much tight and moderate off ball. So with moderate off ball, you're gonna get a lot of helping, a lot of switching. So there are downsides to that, and there are good sides to that. And on the positive side, it's gonna lead to a lot of cutting off the, the drive, which is my primary goal here. But I need to make sure that I am rotating properly. So you're gonna see in the clip that as the, the players are calling out their switches, I'm trying to recover, I'm trying to scramble back. Now against a really deadly shooter, this is a risky strategy, even at early points of the 2K23. But until they can kind of show me, that's kind of the, the route that I take. See, I'm trying to contain, you, they're calling out switches can um, lead to mismatches at times, but but in that case, it just leads to a poor shot contested and uh, we get the rebound. Okay, so I wanna point out something here that right now I'm playing very scrambly out of control defense. I'm not kind of sending him into the spots. I'm just kind of reacting and trying to cut off his drive. So that's definitely not the approach that you want to take. Um, it's still early in the game, so I'm still kind of figuring out his patterns. Um, so I'm just uh, doing my best to stay in front of him and letting my, uh, my help defensive settings kind of kick in and then trying to make the rotations and recover where, where I see fit. Okay, and just a sloppy pass, right? Just cross court pass, sloppy, deserved to get picked off. Leads to another easy bucket. So four out of his eight points have uh, been off careless turnovers. Definitely something I have to watch out for. Here I switch to the Philly elbow freelance and you're going to see different spacing. Wilt comes out to the elbow right there. And we get a nice little post move around uh, Sean Kemp from that uh, spacing. Right, so anytime I see Derrick Rose on the court, I'm trying to switch uh, Matherin or a bigger defender onto him to just kind of contest him a little bit better. I know he wants to get to the rim and that's going to be a constant battle all game long. There he gets around the screen as I kind of get caught up. Not really like connecting, but just kind of uh, Mario running there on the on the screen. I just kind of get stuck there in the animation. But my help defense kicks in. Joachim Noah makes it a tough shot. Swing to the corner, contested shot. 
Right, so here we are, last possession of the quarter, 12 to 10 game. So close game, couple couple mistakes have cost me, uh, definitely. He's gotten to the rim, gotten some free throws a couple times as well. But overall, I'm kind of happy with my, my defense at this point, making it tough, um, kind of taking away the drive, recovering decently well on the kickouts. Let's move on to the second quarter. We get a nice little throw pass there. Sloppy pass though, I'm still, still a little bit more rushed than I'd like to be. That can definitely happen. Nice little post move though by, by Elton Brand. All right, so let's take a look at this again. Get the uh, the pass from the, the corner over here to Elton Brand. Kind of freeze him with a little pump fake there. And try to drive in. It's Will Chamberlain, so obviously you can't just go straight, straight over him. A little bit of a fake there. We're able to get the dunk. So we're recovering really well. The help defenses are doing what they're what's supposed to be doing. We're recovering, forcing a lot of uh, tough shots. Right, so I definitely have a strength mismatch here with Elton Brand on Sohan. Go in, try to draw the contact. Will Chamberlain comes to help as well as we go in, double clutching it. Actually, man, that's looking at it in slow motion like this. The animation is perfect for the situation. Nice little mechanic, still somewhat contested, but it goes from being a red contest to a 28% contest uh, because of that little double clutch. So we're playing defense. Trying to stay in front, just trying to get out in front. He makes a tough shot, but that's just a good shot, man. You gotta live with that. It was important to identify what I'm not doing correct also. Um, here, I'm not being patient enough, man. I'm not letting my freelance do its thing. So as you can see, Joachim Noah was supposed to set a down screen there for Matherin to uh, pop up. That's part of the freelance. Same thing is happening on the other side, but I'm just not letting it uh, play out. So instead of doing that, I pass it into Noah, into terrible spacing. Matherin gets a decent look but that registers open, but that's really not great offense, right? That's, that's me being impatient, rushing too much, not letting the freelance do its thing. So there, we had a mismatch uh, with Wilt and Carmelo, but Wilt Termlin is not a threat from there, so I'm coming down to help in there. I'm forcing the kick out there, then we recover. I just try to get in his way, slow him down. Noah's coming back as well and he ends up getting the pluck there. We're just forcing him into traffic, right? We're, we're allowing him to come into the heart of our defense. All right, so here, Carmelo Anthony is receiving a pass, cross-court pass. We're gonna size up our uh, offensive player, give him a little uh, shoulder fake. We take a little bit of mid-range, take a little sidestep there and just green the shot. So again, easy buckets. It's not always about getting a three. You gotta take the buckets that you get sometimes. So again, you see my, my defensive settings kind of doing what they're they're meant to be doing. You got a rebound, which would have led to an open shot. But take a smart foul. Right, so again, I'm I'm funneling into the, the heart of the defense, right? And really, I should be shading on the other side. There's uh, less spacing on that side of the floor, but the, the concept is still the same. I'm not gonna give him the lane. I'm not just intentionally trying to give him every single lane he can. Ideally, I wanna stay in front of him, make him find other options, but I understand what my settings are, are meant to be doing, right? I'm understanding that I'm sending them in. I have Joachim Noah down there. I always have a defensive oriented centers that can now block shots, contest shots, make it difficult. Get in there. Noah just kind of does what he's uh, supposed to be doing. He made a nice little move there inside and Noah just kind of doing what he's doing, man. He ends up getting the rebound, a little putback shot, but I'm okay with it. All right, so at this point you see I'm switching over to the Warriors freelance. We have a, you know, we have a little lead, but I'd like to extend this a little bit more. Okay, so I'm getting more patient in my freelance, right? And so in this situation, uh, the part of the freelance, Noah is actually supposed to set a screen for Carmelo Anthony there. But I noticed that Wilt is uh, cheating way, way over and Noah has a clear, clear lane to the basket. So this isn't a Y cut or a triangle cut. This is actually full receiver control. So I'm icon switching here. As you can see, pulling up the icons, I'm selecting Noah and then I'm manually just sending him down there for a wide open dunk. So just reading the defense and seeing, but you can see that I'm starting to get more patient with my offense and that's leading to easier um, shots for me. All right, as we're starting to wrap up the second quarter, picking him up here about half court. He thinks he has a, a jump shot for a second, but I'm right there, so he's looking for a pass. Donovan Mitchell barely gets across half court. Again, contesting there. He's thinking he has a shot. We're contesting well, and uh, he's getting some uh, nice little bailout passes, which I'm not super uh, mad at. Those are decently realistic bailout passes that, that could be made. And we're just staying with them. Just a little drag back. I get kind of caught on uh, Darren Williams there. 
But again, my my defensive settings. Um, obviously, Jason Richardson is wide, wide open over there. If you can make that pass, which in this game you probably could make that pass, but at this point he's kind of into his layup animation. Elton Brand is there to contest. Almost gets it. It's a solid 60% contest. Very defensive oriented uh, first half. Push it out to 24 to 15 to end the first half. Okay, here we are in the second half. Wide open for Carmelo Anthony. Late contest by Giannis leads to a foul. That's a tough shot. I gotta live with something like that. James Worthy just uh, doing what he needs to do to get a bucket. Again, James Worthy, man, just doing what he does, getting some good buckets, pushing the lead out. So the game is starting to shift a little bit here, uh, getting a little bit more offensive rhythm to it. Now both of us are starting to hit a little bit more shots. Okay, there's defensive presence by Will Chamberlain there. Hey man, you're gonna have to live with the shot like that. Good tough shot that he makes there. On the other end, I see uh, Carmelo leaking, and we hit. It would have been nice to get a three, but we hit a nice out two there. And he's starting to cook up a little bit more. Tonality of the, the game has shifted from a very defensive oriented one to a more free flowing offensive oriented uh, game. Nice little scoop layup there by, by Donovan Mitchell. I just got lost there. Sometimes that's going to happen, man. Sometimes you're going to guess wrong. So you can see that the, the defensive communication is already showing me go under. So that means a screen is coming, likely from Will Chamberlain. So he's setting that up. So here, I'm, I see the middle is pretty, pretty open. I see both on the other side. So I'm going to over guess to that side. He makes a good cross over going the other way. So that's a, that's a great read by him. And Wilt is uh, not going to contest quick enough. That's a wide open jumper for Carmelo Anthony, who's uh, already starting to cook up a little bit for him. So really good play by him. I made the wrong read. Sometimes that's going to happen, but I'm still going to live with my decisions defensively. All right, that ends the quarter there, and it's a close game. We had some uh, distance, and uh, all of a sudden it's a close game again. Good defensive uh, kind of pluck there by Pippen. And in this possession, we have a great defensive pluck by uh, Scotty Pippen. And this is all settings, right? This is kind of what I have to live and I have to die with. Um, the, the settings off ball for me are set to moderate. So you see Scotty Pippen is playing the lane. There's not a lot of space there. So he's trying to make a cross. He's trying to get in. But Pippen, because he's not in deny or tight off ball pressure, he's there. He's closing that gap. He's pinching on his own. Something you see a lot of uh, comp players do will, will pinch from the side like that. But he kind of gets that pluck. Helps me out on defense. Get the ball. And then we're running the other way. And then rewarding Pippen for the defense with the shot. So I can tell by the defensive movement of my player that right now I'm holding Turbo way too much. Because the game is coming down to the wire, I'm trying to hold on to this lead. I'm on that Turbo just a little bit too much. That totally kills your control. There will be an on-ball defense tutorial coming out soon, so keep your eye out for that. Again, settings kind of help out. And I switched at the last minute, so that's kind of a user block, but he was already getting in position because of the help defensive settings. Big rebound by Elton Brand. See, I could have thrown the pass there. Right, so I want to highlight this because this is a, a situation where very easy to get baited in this situation. Now, let's take a look at when I pull up my icons. So probably about right now, I'm pulling up my icons. I'm pushing my icons. You see them pop up in the next frame or two. And he's already kind of making that rotation. Now, it's very possible, I don't remember exactly, that I already pushed the button here. But I'm noticing that happen now. So with full receiver control set to on for the icon passing, one of the benefits is that I vote up avoid a lot of baited passes because it's not going to pass the ball until I release the button. And while I have the icon selected, so in this case, Sean Livingston, um, I have full control. Of so instead of set, keep, keeping him going to the corner there, I'm kind of making him cut to the inside. That's when I make the pass and we end up getting a bucket instead of throwing up a steal. And a close game like this could mean all the difference. All right, so at this point here, 
We have Noah making a cut to the basket. We have Sean Camp. Essentially, we have a two-on-one situation. You have Giannis that is a possible help defender as well coming in. If I make that pass at this point here, it's probably a steal going the other way. Instead, I force him to kind of commit, get behind him a little bit, and then finally make the pass to a bigger Yakim Noah who can finish with a dunk. So just patience there, not being too frazzled, not uh, making that pass too early. Got me a bucket back instead of uh, continuing the momentum in his favor. That is a tough shot, man. You gotta tip your hat off to a shot like that. That'll play a key uh, role in the, the coming possessions though. All right, so we're back here in the Philly Elbow Freelance. You see uh, Sean Livingston setting a back screen for Matherin, looking for that corner. On this side here, we have a little bit more congestion. I'm gonna use Noah as a kind of a makeshift uh, screener without actually him setting the screen. Let's try to get that lane. CPU cuts it off pretty well. He's switching it over to the hedge man. Containing that, giving me a shot with Noah that I have to be confident in taking. We take it, we green it. All right, so we saw on the last possession, he made a shot from uh, maybe a couple steps in from where he's at. He's got take, a shot take right there, so. Not a terrible, terrible shot, I guess, but I mean, really 15 seconds left on the clock. He's just going to try to pull, but definitely that shot was encouraged because of the make the other time. And that's really not a shot you want to work for with that much time on the clock. We snag the offensive rebound. Going to be patient, going to kind of walk it up to court, essentially. Make a move, get to the basket, get a bucket, back to a 10 point lead. And again, he's kind of far out. He made one earlier, so. He's letting those pull and that's working to my benefit. And on the other end, we're being more patient, working in the post versus Giannis. Nice little uh, spin hook, get another bucket, push the lead up to 12. And at this point he realizes uh, it's the game is over. So I paused it to try to get a look at the stats real quick. 14 points for Matherin on his end. And he left the game at that point there. Um, so overall, very solid game. Um, he definitely he had stretches where he played really well. So I feel our defensive game plan bothered his offensive game plan enough uh, to, to get that win. And just a solid overall win. Definitely the areas where I could see uh, I could need to improve on. And that's why I think these are so important. Just so you understand what you did well and what areas you still need to improve on. All right, so that just about wraps it up for this video. It was a great uh, challenge to, to face the number one ranked player on the leaderboards. On the Xbox side, it was definitely a close game for most of it, and there are a lot of things I still need to improve on in NBA 2K23, but hopefully this series helps me and you guys get a better understanding of what you're doing right on defense, on offense, and what you still need to improve on. So this is Project Elevate. Till next time, elevate your grind, game yourself, and each other. Peace.